scorn scorn Australia like to keep their talent interesting. Kurtley Beale is amongst the most talented players in the world, but has the common sense of a lemming who just booked a holiday to Dover. Israel Folau is amongst the best players of the last decade, but won't be at the World Cup because his personal views come from a few centuries before that. Will Genia seems to flip and flop between world class and merely competent on a weekly basis. And then we come to David Pocock. For me, David Pocock is the best player in the world, but he's also not really played in a full year. This leaves Australia in a fascinating position. Do they risk playing Pocock, knowing how brilliant he can be? Or do they risk not playing Pocock, trying to ignore just how good he could have been in each and every game he doesn't play? This is the dilemma Checker faces. This is the Pocock conundrum. And the answer is, for me, obviously, just play David Pocock. But it's still going to be interesting to watch. It's an ironic name, because there's nothing half-measured about Semi Rajada. Big boy who runs with style, hits with purpose, and passes occasionally as well. He is full fat milk, an entire circle, a proper erection. Don't let the name fool you. If you're up against him, Semi Rajada will burst you like you're a gain line. Fiji's entire team is worth keeping an eye on, but with the ever-baffling and often alarmingly competent Ben Volavola and even second rows as rangy as Leonie Nakarawa, able to put the likes of Rodrada, Veroniki Gonova, Joshua Tursova, Filippo Nicosi, even their entire back row of Wakanda Bolotu, Yato and Mata into space, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Picking one Georgian from amongst their pack of hyper-strong scrummage monsters who probably eat rocks for breakfast and accidentally leave dents the size of Timothy Dalton on every bench they sit on is difficult. One of the great things about Georgian forwards is that they're actually very level-headed and workmanlike. In the past, it was always seven players banding behind Mamuka Godze. Then, it was eight players banding together. Now it's eight players who happen to include Mamuka Godze banding together because he's, he's, he's back, he's rising out, he's rising out the ocean in, in Japan, he's, 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 he's back. There are some very good players in the rest of the pack, but they're more than some of the parts. Then, minus Victor Kolejvili again, because he'll inevitably get Simbin at least 16 times over George's four games. So instead, let's look at their back line. Hopefully, the superbly well-rounded Meripad Kadza recovers from injury, and the defensively astounding David Kasharov is there as well, but there is one truly dangerous back in this Georgian team. Ladies and gentlemen, keep an eye on Soso Matyashvili, because if you don't, he'll be gone in a flash. Very quick and rather elusive, he's the only man in Georgia who understands the concept of subtlety, and if Georgia can get him the ball, he's willing to show it off in quantities that aren't very subtle at all. A few times on this channel, I've shone the spotlight on Uruguay's Nippy Little Nine, Santiago Arata, and rugby nerd living the dream, Felipe Bersegi, is a glorious story, whilst hooker German Kessler is so hard-working he earned his first name. But there's one man I simply forgot to mention in my roundup of Uruguay's standout players, and for that reason, I want to take a moment to acknowledge Uruguay's centre and wing, Nicolas Freitas. An incredibly dangerous runner with the ball in hand, Freitas is also notable for picking great support lines and having a genuinely impressive finishing ability. The only non-Argentine to ever play for the Jaguares, Freitas' talent should speak for itself. And if Uruguay had to score a few more tries than last time out, I'd bank on Freitas to be the man to score at least one of them. You know, in a way, it's almost a shame that Falau is going to miss the World Cup because we're not going to get to see his realisation during the game in Tokyo that he's spent so long praying to a god in the sky when actually the one true deity was living just outside Swansea this entire time. Much as I want to go for a more outside bet, Wales' campaign lives and dies on the shoulders of Captain Alan Wynne-Jones. And there's no one better for that than a man who would die for the cause on the field. AWJ leaves nothing out on the pitch and gives every last inch of his all in every game Gatland allows him to play. Because whereas some nations will be fighting to get the best players onto the pitch, Wales will be looking to manage his time off it. It's a long campaign. But you know, given the chance, Alan Wynne would play every single second of every single game. Even the ones Wales aren't in, He'd smash the hell out of Namibia v Canada. He'd smash the hell out of all of it. As it is, however, he'll need to be content with just being the man necessary to smash the hell out of everything that stands between Wales and their chance at a first World Cup. So that is the last in the series on 20 players to watch for this World Cup, one from each team, one video from each pool. 
that brings to an end that rundown and means that there is only two days until the start of 2018 Rugby World Cup, which I never thought I'd say. I never thought we'd get this close. I thought we'd be called off or something by the time we got nearby. Um, so thank you for watching those. Uh, thank you to everyone that's watching on the Patreon. Thank you to everyone that started in the last week. Uh, I will have this weekend the first of these sort of Patreon exclusive little extra vlog bits up. Um, so that's something for you to not really look forward to, but potentially watch to waste some time in between games. Um, and then beyond that, thank you to the Find a Player app for continuing to sponsor the channel. Uh, if you do fancy ever popping along and playing some lacrosse with some strangers who you meet in a park, because they happen to also like the channel and entered the keyword that you'll find down the side in a moment on the, the side over there, uh, then you can do that. You can do that. In the meantime, uh, I decided this is my last free day before I had to focus on full rugby mode. So I decided I've never been to a Disneyland before. And I thought, what the hell? And I swung over to this monument to capitalism behind me. Um, so I've been wandering around in one of the most poetic things that's ever, ever happened to me. The moment I walked through the gates, the moment I bought my ticket, which is frankly far too bloody expensive, and came in, it started just absolutely tipping it down and it's been raining most of the day, which has been kind of glorious and kind of exactly what I, as a, a man walking around Disneyland on his own in Japan, not speaking the language, want. Um, so that's been my day. Uh, how has yours been? Uh, that only feels polite to ask. Uh, in the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow. If you want more details, I'm happy to oblige. I bought a Mike Wazowski mug despite being very sad, not spending any money. Uh, I couldn't help myself. Um, I'm going to stop, I'm going to wander around a bit more and then decide this really wasn't worth the money. Metro va Rombis nuevamente. Rombis hacia adelante, continúa el tando y va Rombis hacia el frente.